In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The 18th of the month, the memory of our Holy Father, and many of the wonder work of Bishop of Gortina in Crete. We have St. Ariadne of Philadelphia, the Holy Mother Sophia and Irene, the Holy Mother Castor, the Holy Father Romilos, the Holy Father Arcadius, Bishop of Novgorod, and the martyrs Bizdin, Elisbar, Shavu, Princess of Georgia. We're going to talk about our Holy Father Romulus, the great Hesychist. We'll talk a little bit about what that's all about. This is an image of the saint. He lived in the 14th century. So 14th century means what? Eleni. When we're talking about the 14th century, what are we talking about? Then about the 1400s, the 1300s? What's the 14th century? Uh, 1400s. 1300s. Remember, when we talk about the 14th century, we're always talking about the century that leads up to 1400 AD. Right? Come in, show me, uh, who can show me on the screen where we're then? There we go. Right. So we're not, we're not long before the fall of Constantinople in 1453. And his life, the life of the saint, was conditioned and was 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 very much um, affected by all of the political machinations of the time. So things were falling apart in the part of the world because the Turks were coming and taking over more and more land from uh, places in uh, his homeland, which is Bulgaria, and also uh, in places in northern Greece. Let's go to the map and see where his homeland is. This is the village that he was born in. So if we go out. We can see where this is. It's right on the border of contemporary Romania and Bulgaria. Greece is down here. Over here is Asia Minor. Romania, Bulgaria, and then Serbia. So right on the border, right on the, actually the border is the Danube. See that river right there? Can you see that on the map? There's a river running through. That's the border between Bulgaria and Romania. And he, he was born in Vidin, Vidin, I don't know how you pronounce it. It's a town in Bulgaria, right on the banks right across from Romania. Today, contemporary Romania. And his parents, he was raised uh, as, uh, for the Greek father and a Bulgarian mother. So he probably knew both languages growing up. Sound, it, it appears to be so later in his life. Uh, he um, uh, wanted to become a monk. He didn't want to tell his parents that he was going to become a monk, and he left without them knowing it. And he departed the house, entered a monastery in the region of Tirnovo, which is another part of Bulgaria, not far, and he took the name of Romanos. Uh, his, his name uh, was Raikos when he was a child, and he took the name Romanos, or Romilos, and he uh, was very devout and pious in the monastery, and it was about this time that a great, another great saint by the providence of God came from the Holy Mountain, and before that from Sinai. Let's go and see where those places are on the map. It's always helpful, I think, if we can see the map and understand. So, you see the map, you see now the whole region, okay? And... So he's in that village, Mount Athos. Well, maybe we can have somebody show me where Mount Athos is. Anybody know where Mount Athos is? Can you show me on the map? Next to Mount Athos. Yeah. So right on the right side, Mount Athos. Very good, very good. So there's three little, there's three little, let's see if we can come in and see it better here. There's three little legs. Little legs legs here, right? And this is Mount Athos. This is where all the all the holy monasteries, where Elder Ephraim came from when he came from Greece, and the twenty large monasteries, thousands of monks. This has been the center of Orthodox monasticism for a thousand years, uh, especially after the fall of, of Constantinople. So he Saint Saint Gregory of Sinai is the name of the monk who came to his region, fleeing the, the, the various problems that were being created by raids. Uh, uh, brigands and Turks. Uh, before that, he was from Sinai. So Sinai is down here, the peninsula, Sinai Peninsula, 
right? And this is where the Moses and the Jewish people were after they left the Egyptians. And this is where the St. Catherine's Monastery is. And it was always a center of Orthodox monasticism from about the 6th century, 5th century. So he came from there, he went to Mount Athos, and now the saint, this great saint is Hesychus, this phenomenal teacher of the spiritual life, uh, is coming to his region in, uh, near Ternovo in, in Bulgaria. He was a teacher of the prayer of the heart. What does that mean? The prayer of the heart. Well, it, in... You want to ask a question? <laughs> Think about it. Think about it. Uh, so, the prayer of the heart is the, is the hesychastic way of life, and the prayer of the heart is the uh, the, the Jesus prayer, which then enters and becomes a noetic internal spiritual activity in the heart of man. And he taught this, which is the heart of Orthodox spirituality. He taught this to uh, the people at the time, and so he became a, a, a revered teacher for many. Uh, and Romanos, of course, became his disciple, and he was in complete obedience, complete obedience. So essential for a disciple to be completely obedient especially in terms of the prayer and whatever the, uh, the elder is asking him to do. And he would, take, he would undertake the heaviest work. He was a, a, a strong man, and he would look after the sick. And there was a story in the monastery where he had a very difficult old man that he had to take, take care of. And the old man was insistent that every day he have fresh fish. I must have fresh fish, and you, my, you who are taking care of me, must go and get me some. Uh, so he had to be going down uh, and fishing, even in the midst of the winter. It says here in a nearby river, in the depth of winter, he had to make a hole in the ice and fish for this old man. Now, many of us would be saying this is insanity. Why does this old man have to have the fish, and why am I doing this in the middle of the winter? But the ascetic, the hesychist, thinks... This is not an accident. It's not an issue of his passions that I'm fulfilling. It's not an issue of any. It's God's providence. And he wants me to learn something. And by doing this, actually, I'm going to be spiritually benefited. And I'm going to come out of this as a victor spiritually. So if we understand that everything happens for a reason, and God's allowing this obedience for him, because it's going to make him pure, more receptive to the Spirit of God, well, then... All kinds of things make much more sense in our life. We don't think of it rationally and logically. Why? And when we say, why, O oh Lord? Why, O oh Lord? This is a sign that we have not understood the providence of God and his, his, his omniscience and how he knows everything that's good for our salvation. So through such things, such patience and obedience, he sacrificed himself with his heart and soul for the sake of the brethren, and he achieved a kind of voluntary martyrdom you know, the martyrs, every day we have martyrs that we can commemorate here. Every day throughout the year. And the martyrs are, are, are the, the, the most glorious and beautiful example in the life of the church. The Feast of All Saints that we have after Pentecost, and we have on the Feast of Pentecost, and a week later we have the Feast of All Saints. That was originally the Feast of the Martyrs. And in the ancient church, the martyrs were the, the, the great example, and still are for us today. But after the peace in the church, then the monastics took on a voluntary martyrdom. That's what ascetic life is. We voluntarily put down the passions and put down the desires to fast and in prayer. And that voluntary martyrdom was exactly how, how this uh, saint was living. So eventually, though, the elder Gregory reposed, and he and his brother, Hilarion, who had joined him, uh, went to another spiritual father uh, in a place near, nearby, Stara Zagora, and because in that region there were also brigands, and they had to leave there, he departed again. And so his spiritual father also proposed at that time, so he ended up having his brother, his own brother as a spiritual father. He was older than him. And this is how they lived in mutual obedience. This is also another example that we can look, look to in the history of the church, that when we don't have great elders... We do obedience to our brothers and our brothers to us. And this is always so, so important. We always have to be in somewhere in our life in humility and obedience. <coughs> Even if you're a great elder, you're going to be seeking the obedience. 
You know that St. Paisios, when he was, don't touch the, don't touch the table, thank you. When St. Paisios was alone in a monastery in Stomio, there was a young boy coming, and he decided to obedience to the young boy as a, for a time in order to have that kind of ascetic struggle and to learn obedience. So well, this is what is, is, is apparent in the life of the saint. They don't want to do their own will. They want God to show through providence, through other people, through elders, through brothers, what his will is for them. This humility is key. So at the time that they were suffering, the king then, Alexander of the Bulgars, he drove away the brigands from the area, and they were able to return to the monastery and commune there unceasingly with God. Well, by means of the virtues that became second nature to the saint, and by constant application to prayer, the prayer of the heart, the Jesus prayer, the Romanos acquired great spiritual grace and unceasing tears. When Not the tears that you might think, like when we don't get our will, we cry, like a little baby is wants to sleep and it cries. That's not the kind of tears that we're talking about. We're talking about tears that come from the heart being totally overwhelmed by the grace of God and by humility and by love for God, which is a, a, a very high state spiritually. So eventually he went into total seclusion and lived a monastic life, but the region again was invaded now by the Turks, and the monastery was destroyed. Uh, and he left then for the Holy Mountain. So he was up here in Bulgaria, and now he goes down here to the Holy Mountain. And he goes, let's go to the Holy Mountain and see where he went. Everybody see that? Everybody see that? Yes. Yes, Father Peter, everybody can see that. Look, so on the Holy Mountain, there are many monasteries. Down here in the bottom of the monastery, in the, the bottom, the southern part, I should say, of... of Mount Athos, there's a monastery dedicated. It's called the Great Great Labra. It's founded by St. Athanasius of Mount Athos. And this is where he went. The Great Great Labra. Look at that. Can you see that? That's a massive monastery. That is the the, the, the queen of monasteries on Mount Athos, so to speak. And so he, he went there, but he did not stay in the monastic establishment that inside he went nearby and he lived as an ascetic and as a hermit in a remote uh, cell and then with the, on the, when the death of the Serbian prince uh, John Ugljesa at the battle of the river Maritza the defeat of the Serbs and Bulgarians was followed by Turkish control of the whole of Macedonia and northern Greece so again Monks, among them our saint, had to flee, and they went from the Holy Mountain, and they went uh, to different places. He went up and started to do missionary work of, of sorts in Albania, Avalona. He spent years there teaching the people. So here's very interesting, something very interesting. It's very rare for this, an ascetic, a hesychist, the hermit, to then get up and leave and go do missionary work. But obviously the providence of God led him there. And all the fruit of his years he gave to the people there, teaching them the faith. And they had strayed far from Christ, and he taught them how to live as Christians. And then he was again longing for solitude toward the end of his life, and he left, and he went to a place, the monastery of Ravinitsa in Serbia. Well, I'm not sure exactly if I can find that real quick here. I didn't find it earlier. But where I can show you more or less where he went. So, let's look at... So... Albania, up there, he went up there, and then he went to Serbia, which is even further north, where it says Kosovo on the map. So he had a lot of traveling, he went to a lot of different places, and historians are very interested in his life, because a lot of details about the time period are given in his life, and there's so many things that we don't know about this time period, and so his life has become an interest to historians as well. Now, he gave up his soul to God in 1381. So most of the 14th century he lived, from the very beginning until 1381. And this was after the fall of Constantinople. I'm sorry, not before the fall of Constantinople, but after the fall of large parts of Greece and Bulgaria. And his, uh, his memory is quite celebrated in this part of the world. So this is our saint today, Saint Romanos the Hesiod. We can see here a picture of the great teacher, St. Gregory 
of Sinai. I wanted to show you through some of that earlier. So one of the things we can take away from this life is how important it is for us to come under a spiritual guide and do obedience. How important it is to be a part of the holy tradition and follow after the saints, the great Hesiod's teachers. How important it for us it, it is to have obedience even when our spiritual father is opposed, even, even if we don't have a great spiritual father, but to seek out a hu in humility and obedience to our brothers and sisters, and that this is the key if we're going to have spiritual success. So, any questions, comments, or anything about this life? What do you see in this life that we can imitate? Go ahead. No. No. So there are many Gregories in the church, and so most people celebrate when they, it's Gregory. They celebrate it on uh, St. Gregory the Theologian's Feast Day. Uh, my son is, Saint, is named after St. Gregory the Fifth, April 10th, uh, the, the higher martyr under the church, the patriarch of Constantinople. So this is a dip, this is St. Gregory of Sinai. Not too many people have, his, have him as a patron. That would be pretty rare. But today is not St. Gregory of Sinai, of course, it's St. Rom Romilos, uh, Romanos, the, the Bulgarian. The prayers of our Holy Father, Romanos, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, and mercy.